Hi, I'm Serge Pashka. I'm an associate professor and neuroscientist at Stanford University in California. When the Berlin Wall fell, I was in first grade in communist Romania. A few weeks later, I would witness the fall of Ceausescu's regime. While I play with the idea of becoming an artist, I actually wanted to become a physician and a scientist very early on. Uh, when I was 11, I built my first lab in the basement of my parents' house. Those experiments didn't go that well. There was a big explosion, uh, but that's a longer story. I want to bring down the wall of neuropsychiatric disorders. One of the main challenges that we have in understanding brain disorders, such as autism and schizophrenia, is our inability to directly access brain tissue from these patients. While MRI and other methods allow us to image the brain, none of these approaches gives us access to the cells and molecules that cause disease in these patients. I often joke that I suffer from an oncology envy syndrome because you can see how cancer research has been transformed by the ability to grow cells in a dish and to leverage the power of molecular biology. In contrast, in psychiatry, we're still diagnosing disorders the way we were doing over a century ago. To address this, we have been developing technologies that allow us to non-invasively take cells from patients, grow brain cells, and then assemble this into neural circuits to directly study the biology of disease. We develop methods that allow us to engineer lab-grown three-dimensional cultures known as spheroids or brain region-specific organoids. These cultures resemble specific regions of the developing human brain and can be grown in a dish for years. Using this approach, we made brain cells from patients with specific forms of autism and schizophrenia, and then worked to understand the ways in which they operate differently. More recently, we also developed a more sophisticated cellular model of the human brain, one that allows us to look at the crosstalk between different brain regions. In this approach, we derive separately in a dish cultures that resemble specific brain regions, and then we put them together in a preparation known as an assembloid. This allows us to watch as cells migrate from one part to another part and then form circuits. More recently, we created a three-dimensional spinal cord that we could put together with the cerebral cortex and with human muscle to form an assembloid. In this preparation, we've shown that neurons connect to each other and can control muscle contraction. Our technology is already helping us and numerous labs around the world who have implemented it make discoveries about the hidden biology of the human brain. Our hope is that these efforts will illuminate neuropsychiatric diseases and lead to new treatments. There are so many unanswered questions about the brain, especially about what makes the human brain unique. Why does the human brain develop for such a long period of time? Why is the human brain susceptible to psychiatric disorders? Do different psychiatric disorders share common cellular and molecular features? What keeps me up at night is this feeling that we're not doing enough. I regularly get messages from families asking me if there's any breakthrough on the horizon for their children. We absolutely need to accelerate our efforts to understand and find cures for psychiatric disorders.